What do naked people, huge bases, and clan wars mean to you? Well, to many people, it refers to one of the most highly regarded survival games in gaming history. In this video, we're going to explore the world of Rust, from its humble beginnings to the massive hit that we all know today. In 2004, I was just four years old, barely old enough to walk. But someone that was old enough was a man named Gary Newman. He was walking his way into what would soon become a multi-million dollar studio called Face Punch. But before that could ever happen, he had to start somewhere. And that start was with a game called Face Wound. Face Wound was a somewhat provocative 2D side-scrolling zombie shooter that had been developed with a small team. During the development, Gary also started a small side project. It was a modification of Valve's Source Engine that allowed you to basically do anything. This side project would soon become Gary's Mod. But this video isn't about Gary's Mod, it's about Rust. After the success of Gary's Mod, Face Punch was ready to move on to their next game. A DayZ clone. A direct quote from Gary confirms this. Rust started off as a DayZ clone, but then we decided that we are sick of fighting zombies and can't compete with the Arma Island in terms of landmarks and towns. If you'd like to learn more about DayZ's history, be sure to stick around to the end and check out my last video. During the development of Rust, the team had a hard time trying to figure out where exactly they wanted this game to go. It was a survival game, but what else? The team wanted to create a game that was compelling and unique. They experimented with many ideas and prototypes to determine the best direction. They wanted to mix DayZ and Minecraft, a mix of extreme survival with the ability to build anything you can imagine. The next hurdle was figuring out a new game engine. Rust isn't built on the Source engine like Ares mod. It was originally built atop the Unity 4.5 engine. The team was challenged with learning this new engine and the workflow that came along with it. Of course, after a short time, the Face Punch team overcame these challenges and readied their game for early access. And in December of 2013, the time finally came. Face Punch released Rust Early Access, and in just two weeks, Rust sold over 150,000 copies, and the reviews were flooding in. Many stated that the game was rough around the edges and littered with bugs, but it was entertaining. In the very beginning, Rust featured zombies as the primary enemy, but as the game evolved by February of 2014, zombies were replaced with red mutant bears and wolves, and the game overtook Gary's mod in terms of sales, earning them over $30 million. 2014 was also the year that Face Punch started to transform the game into what we know and love today, beginning with the map. The developers made the decision not to populate the world with many places to explore, but rather provide the ability to create them. Newman said, we give them the tools, they make the world. Also, they didn't want to force any specific playstyle. The game was about freedom, much like Minecraft. Although all of this was a huge accomplishment, the game was still far from complete, not only lacking graphically, but the game was riddled with hackers. In late 2014, Rust was ported to the new Unity 5 engine. Gary described this process in an interview with Unity, taking probably about two hours. The developers now had the ability to enhance graphics by improving shader mechanics and texture realism, as well as allowing for much larger procedurally generated worlds. This new version of the game also featured a new anti-cheat system called Cheat Punch that reportedly banned thousands of cheating players in just a few days. Although this new system wasn't perfect, it helped. This version of Rust soon became the default, and shortly after in December of 2014, Cheat Punch was replaced with an even better anti-cheat called Easy Anti-Cheat which is still in use today. In the end of 2014, Gary released an end of year review of Rust. Gary rated it C-. Face Punch focused in 2015 to add features which enhanced the dynamic of the game. Many systems were updated and polished during this time. Also, Rust was the first game to add Steam's community market. Shortly after, the developers made a controversial decision to remove blueprints from the game. This was one of the core concepts of Rust at the time. The system was replaced with an experience-based system and players hated it, or loved it. It seems that some players loved it and some hated it, some quoting it as the best system ever in the game's history and others saying it sucked. With only one version of this experience-based system released, Face Punch moved to a component-based system and finally the most recent system, a combination of blueprints and components. As the developers readied the game for an official release, Gary praised Steam's early access program, stating that had it not been for early access, Rust may have never been fully released. Finally, it was time. On February 8th, 2018, Rust left early access and officially launched on Steam. This was an especially exciting time for Rust. This new version boasted new graphics and gun modifications. Like any good development studio, Face Punch also announced that Rust would continue to be built upon and updated frequently. After the launch, Rust received many updates and additions, including new weapons, vehicles, NPC populated locations, and explorable areas. Along with all of this, Face Punch released Softcore mode, which lowered the difficulty and limited the size of clans. 
In 2019, Facepunch partnered with Double Eleven to port for us to consoles. This announcement set a release date for sometime in 2020, but this date was pushed back due to the pandemic. It wasn't until early 2021, Rust for Consoles entered into a closed beta, and shortly after it was released for Xbox and PlayStation systems. The developers noted that the release of the console version was going to be treated as a separate entity and not affect PC updates. With Rust being heavily influenced by DayZ, it is funny to see that they took such a similar path and timeline during early access development, even being finally released in the same year. Although similar, both games have developed unique communities and formed their own space in the survival market. Speaking of the community, Rust has become a breeding ground for creative minds with players using the game to produce everything from short clips and tutorials to full-length movies. These content creators have built a massive following within the Rust community and the world as a whole. Their videos captivating millions of viewers. They bring a unique perspective to the game, showcasing the various challenges, triumphs, and experiences that players face while playing Rust. One of the most impressive examples of Rust content creation are the full-length movies that have been produced within the game. These movies are created entirely within Rust, using the game's tools and mechanics to tell a story. They often feature intense battles, heartbreaking defeats, and dramatic victories. The content creators behind these movies have shown that Rust is more than just a survival game. It's a form for creative expression. The impact of Rust content creators can be seen in the millions of views that their videos receive, and the legions of fans who follow their every move. They bring new life to the game, inspiring others to be creative, and encouraging them to explore the limitless possibilities within Rust. These creators are the heart and soul of the Rust community. I hope you enjoyed this journey through Rust history as much as I have. It was truly unbelievable to find such a dedicated and talented community of individuals, each surviving in the world of Rust. Hi, real quick before I end the video, I just want to say thank you to all the new supporters, commenters, likers, dislikers, every single person that's watched my last video and blown it up to what it is right now. Um, I can't say it enough thank you for everything that you guys have you know, done for me um, so far. Uh, I hope that I can continue to make content for you and, you know, that we can all grow together. Also, I want to announce the winners of the last giveaway. They are El Ray and Jacobson. I have already reached out to you guys and given you guys the game. I hope that you guys enjoy them. Uh, please note all new people also that there will be more giveaways in the future and more times for you to win, I guess. Um, again, thank you so much, and I hope that I see you guys in the next video.